All right, so welcome everyone to our May 17th uh, regular meeting. And we will start off our meeting with, um, uh, what do we need there? Agenda. So we'll move by. Mr. Buckle, second it. Councilor Kostinchuk. Be it resolved that the Council of the Town of Nipah approve the regular meeting agenda for May 17th. All in favor? And we'll approve the meetings. Uh, motion to move. Councilor Nago, second it. Councilor Gerard. Be it resolved that the Council of the Town of Nipah Approve the minutes of the regular meeting held May 3rd as of circulate. All in favor? Carried. All right, uh, so tonight uh, we'll uh, welcome Glenn and Anthony from the assessment board. And uh, uh, I guess we have to go into. No, you're good. We can just start. Can we just start? Okay. Well, thank you uh, for having us down here tonight to speak on the uh, impact of uh, the reassessment that's presently going on across Manitoba. Um, I have uh, what we have passed out in the past, and this is a kind of a breakdown of the story of our research uh, since the last time we did a reassessment. I'll, uh, I'll get you to pass out both of this side and I'll go on this. Somewhere else in Manitoba, you can find out when 
Uh, there's going to be a meeting about it when you can uh, talk to an assessor and, and how to get hold of them. And in fact, you can get, a, get on the website in the back of this and send us an email. So, and, and we find an email is a really good tool these days in a lot of cases. Um, uh, in fact, it's, it's a great tool when you're passing information back and forth of this type. Um, and other than that, uh, I did uh, a look at, at again, the changing in Bermuda Spells taxable assessment this time around are going to be fairly uh, flat in my mind as far as we're looking at the single family residential is probably one of the biggest uh, concerns when you, when you see increases uh, that may uh, create taxes for those rate payers. Uh, and we're suggesting uh, the taxable assessment in your municipality over the period of time that we've studied uh, increased by 4.4%. Um, some of you, I don't know if you've built anything lately, you might argue that they cost, they cost some buildings, and they've got more than 4.4%. But again, this is an average uh, of taking a look, by, and again, by property class. We're, we're breaking it down from single family, residential, apartments, condos, uh, commercial uh, assessment, institutional pipeline, and, and railway. They're all broken down. Well, I guess one of the more important things when we look at what's happened to Nipua is how it compares to the province. Uh, again, uh, the people in Manitoba who see more growth in their area may end up taking a little more of a share of the school taxes that they may need to pay. And in this case, the province's taxable assessment over the same period of time that we were discussing the Nipua's period of time uh, has gone up around 10%. Whereas your municipality in total looking at all those classes has only gone up 4%. So you're under the 10, which is again, uh, not a bad place to be in for that reason alone. Um, after that, as far as I was looking at the back here, uh, in the case of uh, any of you who get, who get an assessment on your home, the properties with an assessment increase of less than 39% uh, will should probably see a municipal tax decrease of some sort. Now, again, depending on how your budgeting goes on the information that we're supplying, because at the end of the day, you take that information and, and, and deal with that information you get the money for your services that you're supplying. But properties, again, an assessment of an uh, increase of greater than 39.0% would see a uh, possible municipal tax increase. Uh, Page seven, uh, we have a provincial website that you, you can go on. Uh, we also, Manitobans can now access and receive your assessment notice and the detailed property assessment information online. And we also have a tool for the customer along. Um, what Anthony's handing out right now will be the brochure that will come uh, to the uh, right here in your, in your town. And they will be able to look at this. And it does give uh, uh, brief in, uh, information, but I think the information on it, you know, how can I? How can I get a hold of the assessment the assessor? Uh, you know, why was there an assessment? Uh, what does that mean? Um, how will that affect my property taxes? Uh, as I said on the back, uh, we got to meet, meet the assessors uh, in-house uh, communities across across Manitoba. Uh, in Nipua, we we're going to meet with, with people on July 6th at 10 a.m. to 2 in this office. I believe, Colleen, is that right? Yep, right here in the and uh, there will also, if you have a chance, and you're somewhere out west, we will also be in Hamiota on July 7th, and we'll be in Rossburn on July 8th. In all cases of those three uh, choices of where we're going to be, we'll have information to cover all the uh, districts or uh, municipalities that we cover. Um, and I work out west in, say, Prairie View, Yellowhead. Um, we have uh, Alice Archie. Those, those people may come to the one in Rossburn, whereas uh, other people will uh, in Camiota, we may be coming from Oakview, or they may be coming from Rossburn, or things on these spells. We do go, uh, I do have to look after Glenella as well. So I would expect some people probably will be coming here. They haven't had a very fascinating spring in Glenella, from what I've heard, it's been a lot of flight. So we, we, this will give them a chance to come, come and talk to us. So really, that's all I really have to offer tonight. I um, just wanted you guys to have a chance to see this as we're trying to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to approach us. And, and have questions, uh, good questions, and want to ask questions. Uh, we'd be really happy to uh, try to answer them, and we also will try to come to their door if they want us to inspect the property and, and uh, explain how, how we come up with our answers. One of the unique things about Manitoba versus some of the other municipalities, provinces in this 
uh, area, in this instance, is the onus in Manitoba is on the assessor to prove market value. That's, that's not the case in the rest of, of uh, New Spar or New Spar the other provinces. And, and that's good. Um, I think it's important. And I've been here uh, in July for 40 years, so I've enjoyed this career, and uh, I do take great pride in that fact that we try to make people understand that maybe you won't make them happy, but at least if they feel like they've been dealt with fairly, and then we move on. So, anyway, that's all I have to say for you. Anyway, I do have business cards I will leave with Colleen. Uh, and those not here for everyone. If you want to take one, or if she wants to uh, hand them out to anyone that comes in the door, yep, yeah, for sure. I know you guys probably have a long day already. Um, so we might have a few questions. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I was thinking, you know, it would be very important, like you know, there's people going to be watching this, that they realize that you know when they get their assessment in the mail. They should be contacting you guys and talking straight to you guys because you'll probably explain everything to them and you'll have a nice conversation. Yes. Like in the past, all your conversations have been very professional and fact-based. So, and, and there may be some unknown things that uh, you didn't know, like structures might have been removed in the interim or, um, you know, shed burned down or something like that. But, there, there's an old uh, saying, we're only as good as our last inspection. So the, yes. the, the most, more recent it is, the more comfortable uh, the rate payers should feel and, uh, as an assessor, I would feel too. If Correct. something changed that you're concerned, please, as you say, Murray, please call us. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Sure. So, anybody else? Good. Well, thank you very much for coming out. Thank you so much. Back to the old Sam Dyke style. Yeah, uh, my poor friend here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Really nice to meet you. Yeah, it's a nice meeting you here. Let's enjoy it. Some of our youth and our seniors working together. That's my plan. 
uh, in order to get them helping to clean up the trail to keep uh, the section closest to me water very clean. And that's everything. Great. All right. Thanks a lot. Anyone else? Councilor Costa. No, you go ahead. Uh, so the handyman board had a meeting on May the 10th. Um, just prior to that, then we did get together here at the town office to have a Zoom uh, presentation of the review that was done. Um, I thought it was very, very well done. Uh, Nikwa is actually um, kind of used as a pilot for this type of review for the handyman services, uh, apparently. And it will be available on a website, Colleen. They're going to be putting it public. Yeah, the problems will be posting it on their website and we can post it on ours as well. Yeah, so when that happens, it will get posted. Um, the ridership of the handyman is up a bit. Obviously, um, things are starting to move along a little bit better with some of the COVID relief. So um, we did some services on the vans. They were completed. Uh, and due to the chase the ace at the Legion Hall last weekend, we had to postpone our um, fundraising dinner just because it was at capacity because of Chase Day. So we postponed it to the fall. Our AGM is June 22nd where we will have a progressive 50-50 draw and so tickets are selling quite well. So if you see the little pink tickets anywhere, make sure you buy them to help support the handbag. Um, we are um, scheduled for a delegation to council um, coming up shortly just to discuss um, some issues with class 4 driver classification. Um, so if you want to have any comments on that or if you have any questions regarding that, you can ask. Uh, Kathy Jasnick, um, who was our secretary for the last couple of months, has resigned as well. But she will um, sort of sit in until we find a replacement. And yes, Kathy's been on there for an awful long time. Mm -hmm. Very good job. All right, thank you. I'm still here. All right. Um, I guess I get to have my last Prairie Mountain Health meeting, which is, you know, not town council. It's my goodbye. I did my second term, so they're going to feed me. <laughs> and. sandbagging in Mendoza due to the emergency that is there and it's been great to see the representation from all around the area of people coming to volunteer it's not just Mendoza people that you see there or you know Mendo Odana it is people from all over the area even the council from Rosedale was there on Saturday license plates are coming in from Saskatchewan to help out there's trailers like crazy and people smiling as they're working, it's really good. It might be a time to totally look at upstream issues such as water retention and water management so that we're not sending it downstream to Mendoza as fast and of course, you know, heads, heads elsewhere in Manitoba after this. So we really need to look at how bigger culverts are and how our, our water movement is happening. The, um, there are still a couple of housing lots available on Ellen Street at the old Eastern Block site, so if you're still looking at they are there, contact the town. We're probably going to have snow on Friday, so have a bit of uh, patience with the town crews removing the snow. I'm going to suggest to let it melt. And uh, we have our clinic meeting this coming Thursday morning. who are deciding to uh, retire and we've had some vac vacancies uh, due to other issues, um, you know, personal uh, choices. So if you know of someone who would make a great uh, Digital Plains Community Clinic Committee member or yourself, uh, please contact Arnie Susky or myself. Um, that should be about it. Anyone else? All right. So then we'll move to our manager of operations, Denise. 
Thank you. Uh, just as a informal information that uh, we did send our parks seasonal staff over to Mendoza to give them a hand today. Uh, they kind of, kind of plead for help, wanting additional hands. And then I guess their volunteers get quite tired, so we uh, offered up some of our kids. They went over there to help them out. We'll see if they need assistance again tomorrow. Uh, the Boil Water Advisory, which will be going out on Friday, uh, due to the work being completed at the Reservoir and Water Treatment Plant, it's all going on schedule as far as I know. Uh, we've got some wrap-up meetings again on Thursday with the engineers, the contractors all involved to ensure that everything is still planned out perfectly. Uh, we, I'd really like to thank all the businesses. A lot of them we've all contacted and they're incredibly accommodating, understanding the circumstances of this, so really, really appreciate that. Uh, the residents are understanding it, but there's still some misconceptions thinking that we have a lot of water storage in our reservoir or water tower, and that's not the case, people. Um, I, in a matter of four hours, they, the residents could drain that tower out if they're careless, so we really need you to conserve as much water as possible. If we have a bit of fire, uh, it's a lot of trips to the river to water bodies of water to suck water up to haul water close to using our, what we have. Uh, staff training's been ongoing. Uh, the last couple weeks we've had quite a few going through some, some courses right now, so we'll get that happening. Again, with uh, water conservation, our lift stations are running in near capacity right now with all the groundwater, the leaking tile, everything else that's being flushed on the toilet, so we really try to minimize water consumption. It's, we can really feel it. Our wastewater plant, the numbers are up to like 41 liters a second, what Kevin told me this morning, and that's a high number. <laughs> Um, staff have been working to clean the pools, so that's moving along nice. Uh, obviously we'll do a reprieve on our boil water, so we're not using any water on it. And then again, ask residents to be mindful and patient with uh, our road maintenance. Uh, we're trying to bug them up as best we can, but it's hard to fix rust on a road that's full of frost boils. So we're kind of banding and patching everything as best we can. So please, a little patience there. And finally, I did meet with uh, Maple Leaf today, our paving contractor, so they're revising their paving schedule. Uh, they're already feeling the crunch based on the weather delays that they've already encountered, so they're trying to finalize some updated additional paving we're asking for, some numbers, but also what their scheduling is looking like. So they're just kind of, again, hoping for restrictions to be removed and the weather one up for them so they can get going. So that's the other thing I've got. Okay, and I think you were saying at one point that the uh, last time we had a well water advisory was what, about 20 years ago? So. Yes, I believe it was in 2001 or 2002, right before I started here. That's when we had a full failure at the water treatment plant and it flooded. So that was an entire, no water for the community and also no water. So they made it through that one, so I'm sure we can make it through one day of no water and three, four days of a well water advisory. Order, yeah, that's right. Good. Okay, uh, correspondence. Oh, <coughs> beautiful planes. County Court. Uh, this is just their uh, annual audit and statements for 2021. So I assume you, you all have it all on yet. If there's any questions you would like to pose, or um, I'm going to guess my committee representatives on this would also probably have been privy to this information already as well. So, if there's any comments here. I think right now, uh, the, when we looked at the county courthouse uh, through COVID and some of the funding and some things that were happening there, uh, we have had some meetings already looking what we can do to update or make the, the courthouse more functional. Um, but then I think also there's going to be some time to start reviewing some budgets and how things have been running there in the past. So uh, this really reflects kind of a business as usual uh, financial statement this time, but I think it's start of changes to come. Okay. Any other questions? If not, I guess we will uh, uh, continue. Yeah, next time we just not the Okay, so everybody has had a chance to review the March financial statement. Uh, so can I get a motion on that? Bye. Councillor Gerard. Seconded. Councillor Kostinchuk. 
Be it resolved that we approve the financial statement for the month ending March 30th, 2022. All in favor? Very good.
closer to the west end. And uh, so there's lots of room further east to continue or develop that later on. We don't have a plan for the complete, the large property, we don't have a plan for the complete property at this point. That's what we're working on. Yeah. Sounds good. There's no road access in there, you'll just make sure that the fire department can turn around garbage trucks and that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah part, part of the permitting process would be a site plan and we would include uh, roadways, access points, now I see back up. Starting in the summer? Uh, we would hope to late, later this year. Um, prices are high, but we'll see if it can work. <laughs> Have to cut your own trees down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you. I guess we uh, we're going to adjourn this uh, call. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, somebody to move the adjournment. Uh, Councillor Gerard, seconded by Councillor Nadeau. Be it resolved that the Council of the Town of Nipua do adjoin the public hearing at 7.34. All in favor? Carried. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time.